I've always liked what Soundpiece has to offer, especially on a sound front. And it's nice to see that they've not forgotten the individual who does prefer having open style earphones. Thank you to the folk at Soundpiece for making this review possible by sending me this demo unit. All thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's jump straight into how these are built. The unboxing of these is pretty straightforward and to the point. You get the earphones in the case, a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, the literature and a few stickers of the Soundpeats mascot. The case has a matte finish to it but it's not the porous kind so can tend to show sweat and grease marks on it. This does have a USB-C charging port at the bottom and near it a sync and reset button which is always nice to see since many manufacturers are doing away with it. You do see the Soundpeats brand on the rear of the hinge which is an odd placement for it and on the front right under the lip of the lid you'll see here your imagination printed. The the phones are in open style design, so these don't come with extra ear tips for a better seal. But it's nice to see that Soundpeats is catering to the open style as well. The stem of the earphones have a very nicely finished copper colouring on it, with the part that has the S logo being the touch area to control your media. As easy as these earphones are to pluck out of the case, I've had them miss sitting in their spot when I put them back a few times. I suppose it takes a little getting used to. And if you happen to get caught in the rain or want to use these in the gym, you should be good to go since these have an IPX5 rating. On a feature front, these come with Bluetooth version 5.4. They have active noise cancelling despite being an open design. You get multi-point connectivity and if you do want to control a few more aspects of these earphones, you can head on over into the app. So, I normally cut to a different scene but I want to do this live with you right now because I have had a few issues with this in the past. So, I'm just opening this so I'll see how it functions because when I open the app, I have had a few glitches uh, in the past. In fact, uh, I did review the Capsule 3 Plus uh, very recently and the thing is it, it, it was a little bit glitchy and I did a reset on that and it sorted itself out. In fact, uh, this is something that uh, shout out to Abhishek from What's New. He uh, did send me an email asking about that specific set uh, of earphones. Now, maybe call it the red car theory but I didn't really see too many glitches with that set but after he pointed it out, I did start noticing a few more glitches with that set of earphones but this one in particular has had a few, so I'll walk you so, uh, through some of those. So anyway, right now, uh, walking through this, I mean, I'm, it has opened up the app. There have been times where uh, it just opens this screen and nothing happens. It just sort of freezes. But what's cool is you can see the uh, battery percentages of, of, not the percentages, but the icon at least uh, of the left and right uh, earbuds. You also get the cases uh, charging level. I think the previous set of sound uh, that I reviewed didn't have that. Uh, then you get the noise cancelling option and the normal option. Uh, that you can toggle between. Uh, I'll talk about the ANC a little bit later. And then you get a ear canal option over here. So you can sort of cycle through these different settings or modes they have. I think they're playing with resonances here, as in uh, ear canal resonances, because each one does sound um, quite a bit different. It is, I think, catering towards different shapes uh, and resonance factors for ear canal. So you'll have to figure out which one works best for you. Uh, I found that the first one does, I mean, it sounds cleanest to me. Uh, then of course you do have a disable touch mode which I, I do prefer because uh, sometimes accidental touches pause your music and so on. So it's nice that they have that. It has a game mode that I'll talk about in a second and you have a custom uh, key option. So you can go into this and sort of uh, customize each thing for volume up and down, uh, play pause, game mode on, voice assistant and noise cancelling. And you can also customize these with all of these different settings over here that I'm showing you which is quite cool. Then, uh, over and above that, you can also go into this little burger menu option here, your device information, firmware upgrade, add a device if you have another sound beats option, uh, device, you have a reset option, you don't necessarily have to use uh, the, the reset and sync button on the case, but you can use this. And I have reset this multiple times from the app and from the case, just to let you know. Uh, and then of course it does have um, a, a headphone prompt option, which is uh, for English and Chinese. And I like that it has a earbud prompt volume because uh, I think it, by default it's set here. Some of these prompts are too loud. So it's nice that this has this. I think other companies should also try and do something like this. And of course, it also does have uh, uh, EQ modes that I will talk about in the chapter about sound. So moving straight on to the multi-device connectivity. Well, this was also a little glitchy. I wasn't too happy with how it was functioning. Uh, now, the first time you do sync with a secondary device, uh, it's best you put the primary device's Bluetooth off sync it with the secondary and then after that it should sync up. It did it fairly well. Uh, in fact, if ever you are sort of, uh, you know, watching content, let's say, for example, on an iPad and your phone's also connected to it, as soon as you get a phone call, uh, it goes straight onto the phone call. So it doesn't do any sort of, you know, there's no fiddling with it to 
try and switch over to the earphone. So that's very quick. But where the issue is, is when you're watching media on one device and you, let's say you want to shift over to this one manually, uh, you can press play on the secondary device. It'll, it'll show that it's playing, but then it'll pause. Uh, so I initially did think that it would uh, start playing the media and this uh, primary device would pause. It doesn't do that. So you will have to pause the primary device and then play on the secondary. And the thing is, it's not immediate. You like you can keep tapping and waiting for it to happen. It takes about three to five seconds. It's not an immediate thing that it does like with a phone call. Uh, so that's just one more glitch. I think they can sort out some some of these uh, little issues uh, over a software update. Uh, but it's these small things that can, I think, irritate a few people. Moving on to its latency and another glitch. Now, I normally do a latency test or a latency demo to show you how quick it is, but I, I, I didn't think there's any point in doing so. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, for one, when you first use it, when the game mode is not on, there is a significant delay. If you're watching any sort of visual media especially, you can tell that the, the lip syncing is off. When the game mode is on, it is certainly a lot quicker. It's almost in sync, I'd say, barely noticeable that there is a bit of a lag. And in fact, when it's on, Soundpeach does claim that this does speed up to about 77 milliseconds, which is a very quick, it's a respectable time. Anything sub 80 milliseconds, I'd say, is fast enough. Now, if you want something faster for gaming, it's worthwhile shifting over to wires. But coming to the issue that I have with the latency mode is, as soon as I switch it on, it's suddenly like the audio starts getting very choppy. It's almost as if uh, it's unable to send that amount of data over to the earphones at that pace. So it starts getting very choppy. And in the beginning, it, it, it's constant uh, cut-ups in the audio for the first three to five seconds. And then it sort of levels out. It sort of, you know, smoothens itself out for the next maybe 10, 15 seconds. But then after that, there are random uh, sort of intermittent cuts that will happen, say, you know, 20 seconds later after it's on, 25 seconds later, 45 seconds later. And it, it is a bit distracting. It is a bit annoying. I mean, uh, a lot of other earphones in, in a more affordable uh, uh, price don't do this. So I'm, again, hoping that Soundpiece will be able to figure out this little issue. And the thing is, I'd be kind of tolerant with this if it was choppy in the beginning. At least that jitter that happens when you first initiate it, okay, that's fine. But the fact that it's continuing, you know, even after 20, 30 seconds, it comes and goes. It's it's very distracting with your media, whether you're watching a movie or, or whether you're just trying to, you know, if you're just taking down notes, it, it, it throws you off. Uh, even for gaming, I'm sure a lot of people won't be too happy with this. But that's something to keep in mind. When it comes to this active noise cancelling, I was quite surprised that this even has it. In fact, uh, the performance of this will vary depending on your ear canal size because for ANC to work, it needs a certain amount of a seal. So uh, usually I find that if I push it further into my ear canal where it creates a seal, it does perform a little bit better than not. But because it is an open design, there's a lot of high frequencies that will bleed in. It's, it's not that it cuts out everything. It does focus a lot on lower frequencies and mid frequencies. So engines going by and so on will sort of be uh, sort of numbed down. Uh, but the high frequencies, I think that bleed in are accentuated whenever the ANC is on. So uh, I find that to be a lot more distracting. So I, I'd rather just put uh, the uh, ANC off because then it's a much more natural input. And one thing I do like about having an open style set of earphones, because a lot of earphones do have, uh, you know, transparency mode. And through that mode in particular, you're basically kind of shutting the world out and only letting in a stereo signal. So your sense of spatial awareness goes. Whereas when you're using an open set of earphones like this, you can hear things that, let's say, if there's a branch breaking above you over, over your right, you can, you'll know where it's coming from. Or if there's a car coming from, you know, whichever side. Whereas uh, with transparency mode on, on sealed earphones, it, it's only a left and right channel input. So the, the, the spatial awareness of this is great. And uh, it's, again, it's catered to somebody who wants to be aware of their surrounding. Now, this does also come with environmental noise cancelling. So if you do want to make any phone calls and know how your recipient would hear you, uh, I usually do a quick test in a very busy setting. Uh, so here's that quick test to show you how your recipient will hear you in a very busy environment. So I'm calling you from the usual busy street. I do all of my call tests from just to give you a sense of how much noise these earphones are going to be battling with their environmental noise cancelling. And as you can see, whole bunch of two-wheelers, four-wheelers. You might get some trucks, uh, buses with pressure horns as well. And there is some construction work going on behind me that is, of course, never ending. So, uh, of course, this has been the audio off of the camera uh, microphone, uh, so you can get a sense of the environment around me. And I'll switch over to the Air 5 microphones right about now. Uh, so this is the overall uh, vocal tonality you can expect to carry over to your recipient of course when you are in this kind of setting this is the worst kind of situation you can be in this busy street is about eight um, maybe eight feet away from me uh, but if you are in a more controlled environment i do expect it to perform a little bit better uh, in an office or at home and of course you are sitting in the reviewer seat so you'd be the best judge to see whether or not uh, you do like how this vocal tonality will carry 
over across to your recipient. Now, one thing I do like to do is with earphones that have uh, active noise cancelling is I like to toggle between them. So I'll just go into the app right about now. And it seems to be glitching a little bit because the left earbud is not showing up uh, on the uh, on the app right now. It's, it's been doing a whole bunch of glitches like this ever since uh, I unboxed it, which is uh, a little bit frustrating. But anyway, right now I am on the uh, active noise cancelling mode. So I'll switch over to the normal mode uh, and you can listen very carefully to see if there is a shift. So I'll switch over to normal right about now. So she said normal and uh, I can hear the lower frequencies coming in right now. The active noise cancelling does do a good job of, you know, uh, you know, tire noises off the road, engine noises. It cuts that out fairly well, but it's the higher frequencies that bleed in a lot more. So from an active noise cancelling front, it does well over there considering it's open. Uh, but you are, of course, in the best position to see how it's performed right now uh, when I switch over. So I'll switch the over back to the noise cancelling mode now. So she said ANC on. And I think something's wrong because it's on the ANC front. It's doing something weird. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of rumble. This, this might be, in fact, normal sounds much more quiet than noise cancelling right now. Yeah, it's letting in a whole bunch of rumbling right now. There's something, there's something very glitchy with this. I'm pretty sure if I do a reset, it might settle itself out and get back to what it's supposed to do. But uh, I mean, uh, this is primarily the environmental noise cancelling test. So you let me know what you think about the call quality. But as for the ANC, I'm a little, I'm a little frustrated right now. But anyway, there you go. That's the demo of the F5 when it comes to its overall uh, vocal tonality. And I hope that this demo has given you a better understanding of these earphones. And of course, I'll see you back at the studio. These come with 13mm dynamic drivers, have a frequency response of 20Hz all the way up to 20,000Hz and they support the SPC, AAC and Aptex adaptive lossless codecs. Uh, on a volume front, I did have a bit of an issue with this because again, uh, these were glitching out uh, when I was uh, writing my script but uh, I mean they, they seem to have sorted themselves out again. Usually when you handle uh, any earphones, if you handle the volume and you tap up and down, you, you tap it there, you see the volume uh, sort of meter go up on your phone or come down. Likewise, when you pump up the volume on your phone, you see the, the meter going up and you can hear the volume going up. Uh, in between, it just it just stopped doing that. You know, like uh, the older earphones that came out, uh, they used to have a separate, you know, amping option from the earphones. So you had to set the phone to about 80 or 90% so they don't clip and then increase from the earphones. It was doing exactly that. And I was like, I don't remember this doing this or for that matter, any sound piece products or any earphones doing this for a long time. It's been years since wireless earphones have done this. So... Uh, it did that uh, for a little while, so it was difficult to gauge exactly, you know, what kind of volume, you know, I, I like to sit at. But when it does settle down and behave itself, uh, when you can control the volume and it syncs up properly with the phone's volume and by itself, so the, the uh, volume bar does move properly and it works the way it should, uh, I found that even at maybe 30-35% volume, this is loud enough. Uh, there's no real need to really boost it beyond that. I mean, it starts sounding a lot more fun at 40-45% volume, but uh, I did go for a walk with this and uh, I found that even at 35% volume, uh, you know, I mean, there was enough noise coming in. I wasn't cranking it up uh, to drown out the noise around me. I wouldn't recommend that, of course, because you can damage your, your hearing in the long run if you expose your ears to prolonged loud noises. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I mean, 35%, uh, 40% is more than good enough. So just just avoid going beyond 50 and 60% with these. When it comes to its soundstage, I mean, this performs like most of the wireless earphones do. Uh, it exists on a horizontal plane uh, between your ears. Uh, you have good left and right separation with a dead center phantom channel. The imaging, well, it is, it's not the sharpest I've heard. I have heard a few uh, open style earphones, maybe... Uh, about a, a year ago, I did review some uh, earphones, but uh, these are definitely not the sharpest I've heard. But having said that, uh, the the refinement in detail does change depending on the codec you're listening to. So if you're an SPC AAC, it's not going to be as, I mean, it's going to be a little muddy. Uh, whereas when you switch on over to the Aptex uh, adaptive or the lossless versions of those codecs, and you listen to high res source, of course, uh, then it does clean up ever so slightly. But this is not audiophile grade. Uh, it's, it's, it's more for a casual listen. If you're okay with that, 
uh, I mean, just use the SBC AAC codecs all the time because the Aptex codec uh, will eat into a lot more battery than those. So uh, that's the way to go with these. High frequencies are boosted for very obvious reasons, but it does come through sounding a little bit veiled. So at no point does it hurt your ear. These don't get aggressive, so remain an easy listening set of earphones no matter what you throw at it. They do carry a small amount of sparkle and shimmer in the upper highs, so percussive instruments do have some good definition here. I found these able to carry this range pretty well even when out for a walk, which is quite a feat from an open set of earphones. Listening to Lionel Richie perform How Long, percussive instruments have a tightness to them I really wasn't expecting from these earphones, specifically because they're an open set. This is usually a trait with these designs, but Soundpeats has tuned these well to ensure a sense of trueness in this range, but also listening to a higher res codec always helps with more detail. Mid frequencies have a bit of a recess, more so in the lower mid, so it can make some vocals sound a little thinner than I'd like. This tuning can work well for anything instrumental or acoustic in nature, but specifically gets odd sounding if you like a fuller lower mid range. Female vocals can tend to sound on the more nasal side and male vocals lack a depth that usually gives them more dimension. There's a good amount of vocal and instrument separation in this range, but again, this can tend to get muddy if you choose to use the lower res codex. Listening to Majestic, performed by Wax Fang, Scott Carney's vocals do come through with a good amount of energy, but there is a sense of something missing here if you've heard the song on fuller sounding earphones. There should be a lot more depth in his voice because boy does he have some pipes on him. No doubt you can play around with the presets or manual EQ but this is usually how most open style wireless earphones choose to go in this range so there is more of an emphasis in the lower frequencies. And speaking about the lower frequencies, this range is certainly elevated in the mid and sub low range and somehow manages to maintain a good amount of energy. This range is surprisingly full and doesn't lean towards being too bloated, which is a nice surprise. You can, of course, play around with the presets if you prefer bloat, but on its default mode, I do find this range to be just right. Being an open style of earphone, I was expecting this range to be on the thinner side, but this is an enjoyable listen, even with electronic dance music. Listening to Here With Me performed by Marshmallow featuring Churches. This tune has a bass line and beat that define it, which don't sound like it's coming from an empty can with a stone in it. Rather, it's a well-constructed drum with good skin on it. So these remain a fun listen even with heavier genres of music. Now this does come with an EQ you can play around with within the app. Now you do get a manual EQ, which is a 10 band one with a plus minus uh, 6 dB gain. Uh, whereas you do also have presets if you don't want to play around uh, with the manual EQ. And there are a whole nine presets, which are Soundpeats Classic. This is the preset, it comes in right out of the box and the ones I've tested on these which I quite like. Bass boost does as it says and pushes the lower frequencies up to be a little more prominent. It surprisingly doesn't muddy up the mids and highs. Treble boost boosts the highs and can get way too rich and sibilant with this range. I wouldn't recommend this preset unless you're handing these earphones over to a senior citizen. Bass reduce brings the lower range down but does maintain a good amount of it still. Rock boosts the highs, upper mids and bass a bit which does make the sound a little louder but the mid-range does get a sense of being flatter and less detailed with this preset. Classical pulls down the upper mids while retaining a healthy bassline and rich highs, ensuring a fun listen for instrumental and acoustic music. Pop sharpens up the upper mids and highs while going a little easier on the lows, perfect for 90s and early 2000s music. Electronic gets a little louder than the previous preset, more so in the mids while also making the lower range larger sounding. This is perfect for electronic dance music as the name suggests. And finally, you get folk which softens up the lows and highs with more of an emphasis on the mids, which is perfect for folk music. So to sum up, overall on a build front, it is nicely put together, but uh, the few issues I've had with it is, you know, the fact that it's sensitive to grease marks. So uh, if you live in a very humid area and you've got slightly uh, sweaty hands or if you've just handled something greasy and you touch it, it's going to really smear and show on this finish. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, slotting the earphones back into the case, whereas, uh, because, you know, a lot of uh, cases, you know, have this sort of uh, hole that you slot the earphones into, this doesn't have it. It's just like a tray that you place it into. So usually it sort of gets knocked in and then I have to sort of scoop it out of the lid. Uh, but I suppose it's getting used to. But uh, otherwise, I mean, it is nicely put together. I do like the fact that it's got that sync and reset button. A lot of manufacturers are getting rid of it. So it's nice that it's, uh, you know, easy access. On a feature front, I think you're better off using this with the touch controls than going to the app because the touch controls work pretty well. Uh, I have not had any issues with those. 
but every time I've gone into the app, there is some sort of issue. It sometimes doesn't load, and I have to you know quit it and you know open it again or reset the earphones from the app when it boots in or from the case itself. It's been a headache uh, uh, interacting with that app in particular. So uh, it's it's quite glitchy. In fact, uh, I even had that that volume uh, issue I mentioned in the review where uh, it just it just wasn't sort of talking to my phone properly for volume. It 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 worked properly when I first you know listened to it uh, when I un unboxed it. But then after some time, it just started freaking out and doing its own thing. So, uh, uh, like I said, I mean, this is like that, uh, the whole red car theory. I, I really didn't notice many issues with Soundpeats earphones, at least the previous one, uh, until uh, Abhishek from What's New did pointed out, uh, he asked me about those in particular. And uh, those previous earphones, I remember, I reset them once. Uh, they were acting a bit peculiar, but I did reset them. And after that, I had no issues. But uh, maybe shortly after my review, while I was using them, you know, just for the sake of it, I did notice it started acting up a bit. This one, like right from the get-go, has been very glitchy. I, 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 I don't know why. I mean, uh, maybe there are some quality control issues happening at Soundpeats right now. And I hope Soundpeats is watching this and and they try and uh, you know roll out some sort of software updates for this because uh, feature-wise, I mean, it it doesn't have to have many features. A lot of people aren't sitting and tweaking features all the time. People are using it for for the sound, and the sound is the one thing I like about this. It's I mean, it's it's a, it's a nice sounding set. Of earphones, but before I speak about how these sound, the active noise cancelling, I'd say is great. You know, for considering it's an open style, it's amazing that it has it. Um, I, I, I'd say it. You know, for me, it's a bit distracting because as soon as the ANC is on, it's like the high frequencies coming coming in get a lot more prominent. So I'd rather not have the ANC on, so I leave the ANC off. Uh, spatial awareness is better with the ANC off. You know where things are coming from. Uh, and it, open earphones do a better job of giving you spatial awareness than any sealed earphones will with transparency mode on because then it's just stereo sound coming in. You don't know where things are coming from, uh, you know, in a moment where you really need to know. So anyway, ANC I think is cool, but I, I'd rather not have it on with this, color, this style of earphone. Uh, and then moving on to its call quality, I do have a call uh, demo. Uh, if you've missed that and you want to know how your recipient will hear you, uh, head on over to the call chapter. I've left it, you know, in the bar or in the description below. Just head on over to it uh, to see if you like uh, how my voice carries over to you. You are sitting in the reviewer seat and you can decide whether or not you like it. On a sound front, I'd say it's a fun sounding set of earphones. I mean, I've always liked what Soundpeats has to offer. Uh, in fact, uh, I did like the earlier stuff that I reviewed, I think over a year ago. They had a very warm sort of tone to them. Uh, they seem to be drifting away from that uh, sort of tuning, uh, but I do like the tunings they're doing now. This is, uh, again, not an audiophile grade set of earphones. It's not uh, super fine, it's not super sharp in its detail, and that's fine because nobody's sitting and doing active listening with high resolution audio with an open set of earphones like this. If you are really you know, keen on uh, you know, high resolution audio, you're most likely going to get a sealed set of earphones, or you're going to get a proper set of audiophile grade headphones or open backs. There's so much you can do. This is just for the convenience of it, you know, walking down to the shop, doing some chores at home, going for a walk or a run in the evening. That's what this is for. And um, on that front, uh, you know, I've found a lot of earphones, when they're open, they lack a lot of bass. Uh, so it doesn't pump you up for that workout. This does it. It's, I mean, at least for me, it's got a good amount of bass. I think a lot of people may not, uh, you know, uh, or should I say a lot of people will want a heavier bass. So you can always go into the uh, uh, presets or the manual EQ and give it a little bit more. But I think it's just right. It's... It, it's not overbearing. It's it's just right for jazz and blues. It's just right for electronic dance music. Uh, it's not obnoxious, which I think is just right. But yeah, all in all, I'd say it is catered to that active person who wants to be on the go, who wants to be aware of uh, their surroundings. It, it makes sense for that kind of person. Would I recommend this to you? No. And yes, uh, because I'm talking to, well, two people right now. The person who's willing to be tolerant with all the glitches that this has right now at this point in time, uh, I am okay with certain glitches. Uh, I'm, I'm okay, you know, tolerating uh, certain audio equipment as long as it sounds good. So I like how this sounds, so I'm willing to make that trade-off. So I won't use uh, the app at all. Whereas if you're somebody who is a real stickler for, no, you know, it needs to work absolutely flawlessly, don't pick it up just yet because I'm pretty sure Soundpeats has got some ironing out to do. There are definitely some QC issues on the, on the software front. Uh, they will have to t roll out some sort of uh, update to sort out a lot of these app issues and volume issues that I face for sure. But yeah, there you go. I mean, if you do love how a Soundpeat sounds and you want an open set of earphones, yeah, you can consider these. Uh, and uh, of course, moving on to the price. Well, uh, uh, at the time of recording this video, uh, this does have a maximum retail price of about $89.99. Uh, 
uh, but there is a selling it has a selling price of about 53.99 dollars and i've got a whole bunch of exclusive stuff from uh, soundpeed so you guys can check this out uh, there's an exclusive extra 11% discount code uh, which is 40f5 all i'll leave over here uh, which you can use for that extra 11% discount it's valid from the 7th of october 24 to the 12th of october 24 uh, and of course i will leave all the links below and there is also an Amazon Prime Day deal going on on the uh, Soundpeat store. So there's a 10% uh, discount code, which is Soundpeat10, which I'll leave here. Uh, and they say you can get up to 30% off uh, with prices as low as $20 on some of their products. And this is valid from the 8th of October 24 to the 9th of October 24. So that's pretty interesting. And uh, one thing they've mentioned is that their products do come with an 18 month manufacturing warranty which i'd say it's pretty good so uh, are these value for money these specifically well it's it's a tough sell for me man because uh, it's it's the, the glitchy thing has frustrated me a little bit i'm sure if you spent your hard earned money or you plan on spending your hard earned money uh, on these earphones it will be a bit frustrating but again let me tell you uh, these sound very nice the one thing soundpeats has definitely got right is the sound they are not audiophile grade, but they are fun to listen to and they're a nice, very comfortable open set of earphones. So if you're going to avoid using the, so the, the software and the app completely and just use the touch controls, it's a great set, uh, honestly. So yeah, uh, I'd say if you, if you are that person who's going to be tolerant and patient and treat uh, this as a child that will evolve and get updates and fix itself in time, you can pick these up. So anyway, there you have it. That's the uh, uh, Soundpeats uh, Air 5 and um, I do hope that I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. And of course, if you would like to help uh, support the channel, I'm sure you know exactly how to. But of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.